Hello, it's Jeremiah Small with Salon Consulting. I want to talk a bit about the anatomy of the carafe bundle. Carafe bundle is something that you're going to need to work with, you're going to need to understand. Um, and there's some really simple, basic um, aspects to it, which uh, aren't necessarily self-evident, uh, but they're important concepts to, um, to understand so that you don't get confused. Um, first, let's look at just a bundle in its most uh, basic sense. If I, for example, save a uh, uh, any given bundle to my desktop and I open it up in my code editor, um, it's kind of unwieldy. I mean, to a certain degree, it, it's, it's JSON, but it really should be considered a black box for the purposes of human, human usability. The, the point of the bundle as a single file is really as the carafe to contain all the pieces. It's the, the, the transport container. Um, for human editing purposes, uh, we break it up into five um, separate elements that make it easier to work with. Right here in Craft, if we click on the Details tab, just search for a simpler bundle. I have this Hello World. So between the preview image and these these four components, there are five total components that we think of when we work with a bundle's source. I mentioned five components of, of a bundle that we work with as, as humans. Four of them are represented here in this drop-down menu. Um, they are in alphabetical order, and you see config, data, meta, and template. Those four things combined with the JPEG preview, uh, which is basically just a visual representation of, uh, of the bundle, so that in an environment where it's not practical to render the actual bundle, you can see a little thumbnail of it. If I flip over to the config uh, file, um, this actually shows the contents of the, the config element of the bundle, which FileMaker is splitting out into a separate field so that we can work with it here. And if I look at the data, that's another element within the bundle. The metadata is actually several elements. You can see it's got a bunch of properties. Um, and so this is kind of like your miscellaneous. Pretty much anything can go in metadata. There's some required things. And for all intents and purposes, again, metadata as a bundle implementer, you don't need to worry about it. We don't include the preview in here just because it's so bulky, but really the preview image and the name of the preview image, those are also part of the metadata. And then the final thing, and this is something important that you will work with on a day-to-day -day basis, is what we're calling the template.caraf file, which is essentially uh, an HTML document, which of course an HTML document can include JavaScript and CSS as well as HTML markup. But since it has merge variables in there, so you can see uh, this title and this message, these can occur anywhere within the document, including in part of the HTML or part of the JavaScript or part of the CSS. So technically speaking, this isn't strictly HTML, which is why we gave it this .caraf uh, file extension. We'll look at all that in a moment here. The three things that you need to worry about as an implementer are the config, the data, which really represents the prototype for the data that you'll generate in FileMaker, and it also represents the sample data, which is used to display the preview of it before you put it into your FileMaker solution, and the template are the three things that you need to worry about under normal circumstances. Config, data, template. Now, this config is very simple. We've got two properties in here. I've created a version of it for our purposes, which is even simpler. This, this one contains message and title properties. Those are made up, and um, each of those properties in the config has the bare bones of required properties, and we'll talk about those here in a minute. So just for comparison, there are other properties you can put into uh, the config for a given uh, merge field, but these are the bare bones, and we'll talk about those in a little more detail. Before we flip out of FileMaker, I just want to point out that, again, the configuration says we've got a message and a title. And I want to draw your attention to the template, which also has a message and a title. So the config one-to-one -one maps to the template. Each custom property that you want to have 
be substituted when you render the complete uh, final product. And the third one that I mentioned you have to be concerned about is the data one, which again represents the data that you will need to generate with your FileMaker scripts and pass to it at runtime. So let's take a look at this over in our online editor, which is gonna highlight the fact that those are the five elements that you're gonna be looking at when we switch over there. Let's click on the edit bundle and code sandbox. Here in the uh, virtual file system, if you remember, meta and preview, all your miscellaneous stuff. And as an implementer, you can normally ignore those. As I mentioned, this stripped down version has the two properties, message and title, each one with an is data property inside the, the object for each configuration element. One of them is true, one of them is false. And you'll notice that message is data true also exists in the data component. So um, what this is saying is that something external needs to provide a value for message. And so in the sample data, it's simply the value that should be provided. Flipping back to the config, we see that is data is false on this one. And in fact, it's default false. So if I were to eliminate that, that would have the same effect. But um, I like having it in there for this discussion, just to be explicit that it is Boolean, it is true or false, by default it's false. And if it is false, you must provide a value. Uh, remember we have a validator, so Graph validates the format. If I save this file with no value, I'll get a bundle validation error. And the validator kicks in and goes, wait a minute, the data path config title is missing the property value. So config title property value is missing. So I'm gonna command Z and go back and get my value back and hit command S save. And now when I reload the whole thing over here, it's valid again. So the craft validator says, yes, all right, you're fine. Your is data false has a config value. Now, why is that? We look at over here at the template, you can see there's our title, there's our message. So those are the two properties that we've defined in our config. Let's just make a little change. Like let's change the title. We want to say, hello, big world for the title. Command S, we refresh it. Now the title, which is in the div here, says, hello, big world. Let's take it back over to FileMaker. So we take it back over here. I'm gonna just force it, which is just simply gonna overwrite it. So now if I, if I flip over to my config tab, we can say, okay, now it says value, hello, big world. Now to illustrate the point about config versus data, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this script. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the script. And now the strictly config values have been merged into the HTML already. What do I mean by that? Let me open a new brand new file Say, uh, okay, to the default values, open up our script workspace, paste in our deployed script. We can read through this and it basically gives us some instructions about what to do. What I wanna point out right now is that first of all, there is a um, FileMaker expression in this comment here, which is already set up, but it only contains the message property. Remember message was, it was defined as is data. Title isn't present here. Um, why is that? Well, following through here, we say, all right, if we pass in a parameter, then we'll turn that into a local variable. If we don't have a script parameter, we'll actually go ahead and fall back to the value from the data.json file. So you remember we have, flip over to my code editor here, data.json, this is the sample data value. And then as far as the title goes, in order to find out what happened there, we have to dig down here into the HTML template. We'll see that, wait a minute, the title merge field is gone because that gets merged at deploy time. When we deploy the script, we, we go ahead and take care of all the merge variables that are is data false, that are config variables. The data variables get left as unmerged because the expectation there is that you're gonna provide those as data. So they get passed in through the script parameter 
And then basically we take the deployed script and you can see in very simple terms, we loop over them and, and substitute each key with the value from the key list. So basically it's a looping script that goes through every key that's passed in and, and substitutes in the value. So in this case, there's only gonna be one. We'll pass through the loop one time. The only key is gonna be message and the value is gonna be whatever you passed in through the script parameter. And then that's what will be displayed in FileMaker. So let's actually close the loop here. We'll actually run this deployed script. We don't even need to make anything fancy here. Usually this is very standard. You're gonna see this done every time pretty much. You just clear everything out, get rid of the three checkboxes here. So the only thing you're doing is allow interactive content. Okay, the default name for uh, web viewer web. That's an important step. Go into browse mode. Now, looking back at the script, if I look at the deployed template again one more time, the purpose of illustrating what the configs are and when they get merged, um, it's really handy to be able to see that there is my merged config, there is my data merged field, which is still waiting. So when I go run the script, you can see that my merged variable gets inserted there and then the JavaScript goes ahead and bolts it. So that's pretty much the anatomy of a bundle. I'm gonna show you one more thing to kind of drive the point home. The other option for editing, go ahead and close out of our online editor, is to edit locally. Editing locally asks you to create a folder somewhere. I mean, to basically choose somewhere within your file system. So we're just gonna do this, call it demo. And there's my folder on the desktop. Do open this way so that I get it uh, in a very similar looking context. So here we have SRC, which should look very, very familiar. We have uh, our template, we have our meta, and we have uh, our data and our config. If I go in there and I say medium world, save, come back over here, reload, medium world, config, hello medium world. So that workflow, you're working with your local files. If we look at it actually in the finder, let's look at it in columns view. It's the exact same files, always the same five things, and you can pretty much always ignore those two, the meta files. You're gonna be concerned with config, data, and template. You can go to the documentation tab on, on carafe.fm and uh, scroll down to the first section here on anatomy of carafe. There's a link there to the documentation, um, which has a very thorough and detailed breakdown of uh, the entire bundle format. There's an example of a bundle with every possible config. There's talk about more of the advanced topics in here. Stay tuned for videos covering different techniques for editing and configuring and deploying your bundles.